All right, we're back live at the uh, Trustmark Studios with uh, Ray Andriacchio and also Chris uh, Thompson, her brother, and uh, Trustmark providing constant protection, ACH alerts on any debits, Trustmark.com member, FDIC. Also live on supertalktv.com in HD and also live on Facebook if you want to join us. When we last left you, I, I'd ask Ray about, for the people who don't know what was going on and why those questions haven't been answered as far as the evidence and you were you were if you would continue that well i think that the forensics you know i was told by our one of our investigators max mays years ago he said you know ray the forensics is going to be what busts this case open he said because forensics doesn't lie people can lie people can have their opinions but forensics do not lie and so I think the forensics as a whole, but specifically the level of rigor Christian was in. I mean, we have a nationally known forensic pathologist who, you know, has stated that it would take four to six hours for him to have reached that level of rigor. Uh, it, that blows their story and their timeline of events out of the water. We um, now have, uh, since the podcast came out, someone came forward who actually reported that she heard the gunshot at 1230, around the 1230 mark, which, again, blows their story. Um, we have eyewitness accounts. We have accounts of where um, people discussed, you know, that they received a phone call from the, the person that we're saying was in the apartment, the third person saying, you know, I messed up, mm -hmm. um, I shot Christian. That information was given to the DA at the time, was given to police, was given to the attorney general's office, and they were never questioned. They were never brought in. It was just totally ignored. Was that covered in the podcast? Yes. The position of the gun and the manner in which the gun's chamber was found was also a big yes. deal. And, and most, even your people, because if folks don't know this, you've had police detectives, you've gone through three police chiefs, the uh, MBI, you've gone through private investigators, crime scene reconstructionist, a forensic pathologist. Several attorneys have tried to figure out why Christian died. You have trained people who are very knowledgeable of uh, crime investigations who all agree with you, the mom, that uh, these answers aren't credible. So there is a viable reason why the podcast is sustaining and become one of the hottest in America. Well, that, and I think that people who are out there who say she needs to go home and accept this or she needs to give up and why she keep going around talking about this, it's been five and a half years, is that if I had not been given reasons throughout the five and a half years, nobody has given, who has been able to answer my questions mm -hmm. about, okay, if you're saying it's a suicide, prove it to me. Explain to me how the gun got on this side of his body. Explain to me how it was decocked. Explain to me why there's not blowback blood on his hand and on the gun. Explain, you know, if you can give me, prove to me scientifically how these things happened, well then, you know, I guess I'll have to accept that. But nobody, yeah. they avoid those questions. They brought them in for questioning, but did they interrogate them as far as Christy and Dylan's concern? Uh, Whitley and Dylan, Whitley, no, they they didn't really question them. They they took their statement. That's it. Mm -hmm. But they never interrogated them on the side. No, and they never brought them back to then clear up questions when the gunshot residue came back, and they both had gunshot residue on their hands. There was no, you know, bringing them back in to say, well, okay, now we found out mm -hmm. these things. How do you explain that when you're saying you weren't even in the apartment when he shot himself? The gunpowder residue on, on their hands, too? Yes. Did you buy that explanation? Oh, no. I did. <laughs> no, I haven't bought well, anything they've said. <laughs> well, Dylan never has given an explanation and has never been asked for mm -hmm. one. So. They had, uh, Dylan had gunpowder residue on, her, on his hands, and she had uh, gunpowder residue on her hands. Yes. And, and according to Dylan's own statement that mm -hmm. night, he was not even at the apartment whenever... Um, but they Christian both said killed. that they were shooting guns the night before. Then he, you had conflict he, on that. No, he did not. He did not. Mm -mm, she did. Um, what's your interaction been with the uh, Attorney General's office? Um, we have not had a good relationship with the Attorney General's office. We've gotten no support. We've gotten no help. They refused to talk to us. They refused to interact with us at all during when they took over the case. Mm -hmm. um, we said, well, you know, we would like to sit down with you and with the investigators and talk to let you know what information we have. They said they refused to talk to us, said that they didn't want to be biased in their investigation, but the problem is they did no investigation. Now, now Bilbo Mitchell was, the D, uh, Mitchell was the DA handling this initially when it happened. Right. 
Right. He retired, Mm -hmm. went to the AG's office, where I guess he's still there part-time. Yes, in the Public Integrity Unit, which is the unit that is handled handled my son's So was he head of that unit? No, no, I don't think so. I think Tony Green is head of the unit. Was he the deciding person to either accept or reject uh, that? No, Bilbo was not working there when the Attorney General's office took the case over. He recused himself after three years and said it was because um, he coached Christian soccer. But my question was, it took you three years to Mm -hmm. remember that you coached Christian soccer. The... um where does it stand today as far as any – are you making any inroads at all, or are you just – you're not getting the answer still? Um, I'm not get, making any inroads with the DA or the Attorney General's mm-hmm. office. Um, we're making inroads because, again, because of – you know, the podcast, because people like you that have us on to speak, we're gaining more and more support because, you know, people who see the evidence, they realize that, I mean, it was a homicide. And I think that they recognize that we're being kind of stonewalled. And it would have been so much easier for these people to, who refused to open the case if they would have just opened the case, sat down with us, and, you know, if they didn't have anything to yeah. hide. Now the original police chief who was there at the time he was he's no he's no longer there he was he was he was gone what months after that about or two months about two mm-hmm. months after that was this the reason for that or was it, it was an accumulative reasons for him to go I think it was other reasons mm-hmm. now did he did he show up at the scene yes and my understanding was he showed up at the scene and and said stop it right now this is a suicide everybody leave or something of yes. that sort yes said he stayed there is that about an accurate five statement minutes. he stayed mm-hmm. there five minutes and declared it. And said, you know, quit, don't, don't collect any evidence. It's a suicide. And walked out and didn't, you know, there's no documentation that he is there. He didn't sign in or call in like they're supposed to. Yeah. Um, but the detectives there have said that he was there. Is there going to be another season of the podcast? Do you know? I think they're planning on having another season. It won't, won't yeah. be about Christian's story. They'll I take up you. another case. In the few remaining moments that we have here, what, what else would you like the audience to know? Well, I think that, um, you know, going back to the attorney general's office, that one of the main things that, and I know people are tired of hearing this, that they did was they released Christian's file. And when they released um, his file, they included the autopsy photos. And that was released on Facebook to thousands of people. And um, they released it to individuals who requested it, to anyone who requested it, and which is very, um, is an anomaly. And it was very hurtful, and it was also against federal law. And so we're pursuing that because that impacts the DA's Mm -hmm. office, who also encouraged it. Do you still have any investigators working on the case? Oh, yes. They're Mm -hmm. still working? Mm -hmm. Is the $100,000 reward still active? Oh, yes. It Mm -hmm. is. Chris, any thoughts that you want to say? Anything? Not really. I mean... um, I think we both understand that, and I think the audience understands that, that if these questions were answered in the in the proper time after the death, you probably wouldn't have been here. You would have had a chance to have closure. Oh yes, if they had followed typical protocol, then there would have been arrests made within the first forty-eight hours, probably mm-hmm. seventy-two hours, and this would have been there would have been closure, and we wouldn't be here today. Um, but. There was just a concerted effort by multiple people to make sure that it wasn't handled correctly and it wasn't followed through. Are there things that you know about this that you haven't said on the podcast because legally you can't? Yes. Yes. You think that we're all over? Will, will, will those come out sooner or later? Hopefully. Yes. Um, How hard is it keeping that in? <laughs> well, I've I've known it for three, four years, and and um. You know, and and certain people were told, but again, they didn't follow through with the information. But you've given that information to the proper authorities, and they haven't followed up on it. Yes. Is it politics behind it, or is it power of some people? I think that it was. Yes, I think it was the the DA at the time um, using his power to mm-hmm. keep the people who killed my yep. son. Out have, of jail. You, have you asked any of the attorneys or the people that have, uh, have been part of this? Are, are there any legal things as far as lawsuits or stuff, or, or any other maneuvers that are possible? 
Yes, we there's a legal suit pending. So, it, so in the words of uh, of uh, most of us, this ain't over. No, not by a long shot. <laughs> you're a brave lady, and uh, your your tenacity has to be uh, celebrated. Thank you. Thank you guys for coming over. I appreciate it Thank very you. much.